Hey, today's Focus on Style quick tip is what to do when hiring a virtual intern or coordinator or someone who is basically at the very almost starting level of your business. Now, granted, you get labor that's a little less expensive than if you had somebody that's more qualified and it helps to build your business out, it helps to teach them more stuff, but you also have to start to weigh the time on when it becomes so much of your time to train that it's just not worth it, that money would be better spent, you would make more, you would actually see more progress in your business if you actually hired up a bit, or when you have somebody who is, even though you've gone through a application process, a couple of test assignments, you've gotten some references, you've Skyped with them a few times, they're like, yeah, 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 you want to make sure they're really there and doing the right job. And what happens, especially with people who are not used to working virtually, is they kind of peter out, like, yeah, I could be there, and it's like, I'm available from 10 to 6. Uh, but where are you? Oh, well, I'm available, but I'm not there. Like, it doesn't really compute. So what I like to do is to make sure that you're also paying someone that they're not there with you and you know they're making the most of their time and your time, is I like to make sure that we use something that's a tracker. You can get something with hub staff if you use online staff, uh, what is it called? Online Filipino staff, on whatever that online thing is. They have something built into, but make sure there's so many ways out there that you can actually get the person on the other side to turn it on and you can monitor what they're doing. It's not a matter of having Big Brother looking over them. It's a matter of knowing where they really need assistance, what's taking them too long, and were they really working there or not. And on top of that, too, using some kind of accountability season ticket either if it's something like a long Google Doc where they have to tick things off step by step or you're using something like a Basecamp or an Asana, whatever it is, daily check-ins. In the beginning, it's always good to make sure that they check in every few hours a day until they get started so you have an idea of knowing what they're actually doing when they're not with you. And another thing I like to do is I like to give them enough rope to hang themselves quite honestly. So if I tell somebody I need to do this, this is what, this is your do now, right? This is your do now. What are you doing here? We've just trained you. We've showed you. We spent the time to do this now. I don't necessarily say I need this back in four hours or by tomorrow or later in the day. I would hope that the person on the other end has the ambitiousness, the common sense to know if this is the one task I was presented that I need to do it now. And you would be really surprised how that doesn't happen. Because if you are constantly giving people, I need this now, I need this now, I need this now, from the very, very, very get-go, basically what happens is you almost become like one of those helicopter parents who've got to be on their head all the time. Do this, do that. And this is a really great test to see how proficient the person is and how much they really respect time when they're not right there with with you. So I hope this helps and see you in the next book is on style quick tip.